Welcome to Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Bobby Pominville and I'm the reporter for the arts. And you are going to enjoy this show so much. I'm at the Hudson Hospital and I'm here with my friend Margaret Welshans, who is the Healing Arts Coordinator. I've been admiring this program for years, Margaret. Oh, thank you, Bobby. And you have been on the show several times. Yep. And I know you always tell me that this is your dream job. Would you just tell us a little bit about that? What do you mean by that? When I was in high school, I was very, very interested in art and also science. And we didn't have a lot of money, and the scholarship I got for nursing mm -hmm. was a lot bigger than the one I got for art. So I went into nursing. Mm -hmm. And I always gravitated toward working in psychiatry because I'd been very interested in the human spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for many years. I worked in psychiatry. I worked in nursing administration. And then I was able to go back to school and get my degree in art. So it was perfect. So coming to the hospital was a fine fit for me because I'm not afraid of hospitals and I'm not afraid of artists. And so it's a perfect dream job for me. See, it's a perfect fit. Yep. And yep. what a difference you've made. Well, we're so lucky to get the quality of the art that we have here, the generosity of the artists, and the support of administration, that's what makes it possible. Marion Furlong, our CEO, is the right. spirit of this program. It was her vision to begin with, and she has been absolutely supportive all the way through, so mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. very grateful. And we should probably say it is in conjunction with the Phipps Center for the Arts. Yes. So we it's must thank uh, John Potter. And John the Potter, yeah. Um, Marion called John when, they, when it was still in the drawing stages oh. and said, John, is there any way we could collaborate? He said, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so it has been a perfect, perfect marriage between these Wonderful. two uh, community organizations. Yes. We have a lot of um, volunteer crossover. We have Phipps actually donated, the Phipps Foundation donated $50,000 or $70,000 initially to build the very first hospital in 1953. Oh in today's dollars, that's about $800,000. So, you know, that's a huge thing. So there's always been a connection, mm -hmm. and now we've formalized it. Well, that is just wonderful. And, you know, that's even before my time in Hudson. So as a longtime community member, I'm just so pl pleased that we have people with that forethought. Me too. And now I know you're very reluctant to tell me about all your awards, but I do want you to mention that you have the Governor's Award, and I believe you just got it last year. Two years ago. Two years? Yeah, yeah. And that is so commendable. And it was very, um, it's unique that a hospital be awarded this kind of thing so we are very very pleased and humbled yes. to be recognized and that is wonderful mm -hmm. and it, for an innovative program that yours is the first of any kind I believe I think it's unusual that we have this kind of collaboration between a community arts organization and a hospital most hospitals now have some kind of arts program but I don't think it has the breadth or the depth of what we are able to enjoy here. Right. So. And it's affecting everybody who sets foot in this hospital. I hope so. And like you just told me a few minutes ago, people are coming now just to view the art. Well, I have three goals, actually, for this program. The primary, of course, is the patients, to yes. create an environment that makes healing possible. Mm -hmm. And the second is for the staff. Right. Um, I think that this is a very, very difficult and demanding job. Mm -hmm. There's no other uh, organization that... I was trying to get you to so I'll read some of these. Oh, okay. Uh, there's, there's no other organization that... Do you maybe want to start that sentence over? How did I start uh, it? Let's see now. You were into... Um, 
you said that it's for the staff. Yeah. We were talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. Another important aspect of this program is for the staff. I, I think that it's a very, very difficult job. There is no other public building that has the range of emotion that a hospital has, mm -hmm. and it's very stressful, and the staff yes. feels it. So yes. anything we can do to inspire or enrich their environment, I think, is very useful. Yes. And one of the major things that we do is provide change mm -hmm. because we rotate the art so that it if you buy art and put it up on the wall, it becomes wallpaper, and you don't even see it <laughs> after a while. But by having this kind of change, I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing for the staff. And I always promise them they're not going to like every piece that comes here, but it's going to be gone <laughs> in three months. So if they like it, they ought to buy it. It is very individualistic. And they can buy it on payroll deduction. Oh, Isn't that really? Great? That's just great. I didn't so, know you offered that. Yes. Well, how so wonderful. The third group, of course, are the people in the community. Yes. Most people don't like to come to a hospital. They think we speak a foreign mm -hmm. language, and it smells mm -hmm. funny. So mm -hmm. we try to open it up through exhibits, through receptions, through inviting kids in the community to do things so that they come here for something pleasurable before they have to come. That's a good thought. Yes. People feel very vulnerable when they come here, whether they're patients, whether they're visitors, whether they're family. But this is, this is difficult. We want to make it easier. Yes. So. Yes. Very I th nice. I think that um, familiarity reduces anxiety. Yes. And when you reduce anxiety, you enhance healing. So. True. And it happened to me last year, I told you. Yeah. I had someone in the hospital passing away. And... I was so encouraged by all the artwork around. I'm so pleased. And the bird houses right out that window because it was a very serious moments in that room. But to be able to look at that artwork was, it was healing. I'm so pleased to hear so. that. So pleased to hear Well, that. now we're going to move on. Okay. Let's and uh, I want you to show me some of the artists that okay. are exhibiting right now. We have some fine things for you to see. All right, let's so. go. This is a very interesting exhibit that we have right now. It's a um, stepmother and stepdaughter. Edie Abnett um, is the painter, and she's had, oh, she's been an artist for at least 40 years. This is a major departure for her, much more abstract than the kind of work she ordinarily does. This is her stepdaughter, Julie Abnett, and Julie takes a photograph, and then Edie... Um, interprets it in an entirely different way. Um, it's the most unusual um, combination of artists that I've seen, and I think they're absolutely breathtaking. Just beautiful. This quilt was made by staff members. There are 2,200 pieces, individual pieces in here, and um, one of the nurses uh, still works here. Kathy Smith. One of my favorite things about this is the little stripe of blue that goes through the center. It can either be the St. Croix River or the sky, whichever you're in the mood for. Here are some absolutely wonderful dioramas by Howard Quadnow. Howard is uh, the uh, chair of fine arts at MCAD, and most of his life he's done paintings. But now he's doing what he calls 3D paintings. And I think they're absolutely fantastic. The little figures are from military um, reenactments. People like do the whole Civil War again and they buy these little tiny soldiers. Howard takes these and redresses them. And if you look at this one closely, you can see that there's a lot of work involved in changing the positions and redressing them. They're wonderful, they're charming, and they're whimsical. The title of this one is, I Might Not Be Here When You Get Back. Uh, the beginning of hope can look a lot like the end. And as you can see, um, it's a not too subtle depiction of 
some of the kind of pig-headedness some of us might exhibit from time to time. This piece is by Sarah Balbin, who's a, a local sculptor. Um, she says that she was adopted by an Ojibwe tribe uh, who helped to instruct her about some of the myths and about of the, the concepts of healing. And this particular piece is based on um, maple sap, which is used as a healing element in um, the Ojibwe culture. And she always uses rocks and always uses metal. And you can see that it represents the maple leaves. This is going to go in our new um, offices building when it opens. OK, this is um, essentially the heart of the hospital. It was one of the first pieces we had commissioned. And the people who donated this piece wanted it to express warmth and joy and welcoming. And we consider it a kid magnet. Um, most kids don't like to come to hospitals. But once they come here, they zero right in on this. And Jenny at the information desk keeps pennies so they can make a wish. And the more entrepreneurial children help themselves. So this piece was donated to us. And Tim Harding, a Stillwater artist, to do this. Every single little piece there is placed very, very carefully, and it's all made of Thai silk. Uh, Tim is pretty well known um, internationally as well, so we feel very, very fortunate. For this beautiful, beautiful piece of art, and I think it uh, it reflects our whole idea of warmth healing, and the gentle curve that we have as a logo for our. We always have two featured artists here, um, a two-dimensional and a three-dimensional artist. This exhibit happens to be they both do both 2D and 3D art. Um, both Vicki and Donna are um, ordained ministers. and. They both live in North Dakota, Minnesota border. These pieces, I think, are extremely rich and unusual. I think if you, if you come up close here and look at the, uh, the detail, the subtlety and the beauty that they put into these things, they, they work um, in order to express the beauty of creation. And I think they absolutely capture it. I've seen a lot of this kind of fiber work. This is by far the best, best ever I've seen. Again, we are so fortunate to get this kind of, this quality of work here in Hudson. And if you look over here, you can see again the creativity, the almost recycling. Uh, that they do. They use things that otherwise would have been thrown away. And both of them started doing this when they were children. Um, these can be very intricate and very complex. But if you look at the green piece over here across the way, um, this one is called Three Birds. And you can see how abstract and subtle the bird shapes are in here. And yet, it has that calming and sort of lovely opportunity to escape into another world. One of the best things that we do here is allow people just a minute or two of respite, a way to get away, a little distraction, just for a very short time. And this kind of rich, rich art helps us to do that. This is another very, very interesting opportunity for staff and patients. What we have here are the originals of illustrations of a children's book. And these are the two books uh, that are featured here, Toad and Little Sprout. And the poem was written by Eileen Zeisler, and it's illustrated by Janelle Thompson. Now, these two women met maybe 20 years ago. One, um, Eileen was a special ed teacher, and Janelle's daughter was one of her students. 
now her daughter is in her 20s, and these two are now collaborating on these beautiful, beautiful children's books. And this is, this is when the log cabin was built, and this is when it was beginning to fall apart over history. And these are forest animals. This is our main conference room, and so we have uh, things in here that might be too big or the content might be a little bit more difficult for a patient room. But these are some absolutely gorgeous pastels of the artist dog. Uh, the first three are Jack. And Jack has gone on to his reward, but he now um, has been followed by Buddy. And Buddy barks at the stars. And uh, Don Palmgren, the artist, says he likes to make visible that which is invisible. And he said, we always have to remember that a dog is way more than a dog. If you look at the texture here, to get this kind of texture and this kind of um, gradation in soft pastel is absolutely amazing. And he said he borrowed the neighbor's cat. Margaret, I want to thank you for being on the show today. I think it's about your third time. But the good news is I learned so much about all the artwork. And it's so wonderful how you've contributed to this hospital in the healing arts. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for coming. I just appreciate this so much. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed watching today.